Hey everybody, welcome back. We're going to jump right into uh, today's project. It's going to be, a, it's actually going to take me a couple days. I'm going to be making two 18 by 18, probably by 30 inches tall or so nightstands. It's going to be a shaker style. It's going to have one drawer and a low shelf. It might be some tapered legs, but this piece here will be turned into our leg stock. I have another piece piece of thick walnut like this eight quarter and then I have a bunch of four quarter for the drawer top panel and all that so let's get right into it I'll put us in a time lapse do some planing all right guys we're going to start out over here on the joiner and get a good reference surface we're going to flatten the face and get a good edge squared to that face but if any of you are wondering, this is a Grizzly 8 inch wide helical head uh, joiner. This is one that has the parallelogram beds. And as you see here in this clip, uh, my camera mount or a tripod or something did not like whatever it was placed on. It's got a little bit of vibration in it. So that's actually worked out in the next clip here. And luckily, nothing to deal with in this one, but... We're going to go ahead and plane these down now that I've got a good flat reference surface, get two nice parallel faces, and I'm going to finish these out at about an inch and a half thick, and this is going to be for the legs of the nightstand. If I remember right, they're going to be about an inch and a half by inch and a half by 25 inches long overall. And then since the top is going to be one inch thick, that'll place the final height at 26 inches. And that's a pretty good height for a nightstand. Uh... It's not too tall and it's not too short. So we're over here at my small saw now. This is a 10 inch cabinet saw. Um, I actually have a video sort of on this. Uh, it's been a pretty good saw. The reason I'm using this over the larger one that I have is that it has a riving knife. And my 12, 14 inch saw does not have a riving knife or a splitter. And I was unsure what this wood was going to do, but it was actually surprisingly stable. And I don't know. It's been air drying in a shed for well over 10 years. I forget the number they said it was in there, but it was a long time. And normally air dried wood, if it's only dry a few years, can be unpredictable. Uh, this was well over 10 years, so it was surprisingly stable. But one of the best ways that I've found to take care of epoxy, excess or whatever, is with a card scraper. Thing, uh, excuse me, same thing with uh, glue seams and glue joints. Any squeeze out with that, just use a really nice card scraper and you don't have to worry about sanding as much. Because we all hate sanding. I mean, we're woodworkers, but we all hate sanding. So, going on now breaking down the stuff for the sides of the nightstand and the tops for it and the tops or whatever I believe they ended up being about 10 inches wide or so so I didn't joint those but everything else was just under 8 inches so I was able to go ahead and joint those and get a nice flat face and as you see here I forgot to switch my uh dust collection over to the joiner it was still hooked up to the table saw so I did end up making a bit of a mess but I mean who doesn't we all forget to do that from time to time but I got my faces jointed going through jointing the edges now we're going over to the planer I'm gonna go ahead and get all these planed down and these are gonna finish at about three quarters of an inch thick if I remember right I tried to do all of the sides and stretchers and everything three quarters of an inch thick and then the top and the lower shelf are going to finish right at one inch and they turned out surprisingly well the wide boards that I had picked out for the top were surprisingly flat and I was able to just uh, excuse me just plane those straight without having to worry about joining them and as you see here, I'm trying to figure out which way I want the grain pattern to lay out on the top. And I'm folding the two boards together and running them on the joiner like that. And that way if my fence is in or out of square a tiny bit, 
whichever way it's out, the angle is going to counteract each other and give me a good, solid, perfect glue joint. So, that's a little trick that I learned, and it works surprisingly well, and it gives you a really good glue seam that almost disappears, and you can't really pick it out, especially if you try to match up the grain very well. So, I'm cutting these down a little bit oversized. The stretchers I'm actually cutting to 6 inches, and I should have cut 3 of the stretchers for each one to 6 inches, and then cut the one for the front to 6 and a quarter. And you'll see why at a later step, but that's because I needed to get the two front stretchers and the drawer face out of that front piece, and I totally forgot that, you know, hey, the table saw kerf has to be accounted for. And I needed two one-inch pieces and a four-inch piece, and I ended up cutting the drawer face and the lower stretcher out of that board so it had perfectly matched grain. And then I tried to find another board with very similar grain and color, and I used that for the upper stretcher. And really, they kind of matched pretty well. You almost can't even tell that it's from a different board because I tried the match it so well and this is probably one of the parts where a lot of people are going to go crazy that I did pocket holes instead of mortise and tenon I could have done mortise and tenon but I needed to get the show on the road needed to make some progress because the deadline is coming up quick and I have other things that I'm working on too not just this if I had all the time that I needed to to devote to these I would have done mortise and tenon, but I was also trying to keep price point down for the people too. And pocket holes are plenty strong. I mean, especially for a nightstand. If it was a dining table, oh yeah, I would have done mortise and tenon. But, you know, sometimes we got to do stuff to get moving along. But right here is where I'm cutting that stuff for the front drawer face and the two stretchers and you saw me take those other strips and cut those to one inch and actually match the grain on them and now I'm cutting the legs to length over here on the cross cut sled I do need to go through and actually rebuild this sled the hardwood runners I have on it have kind of worn unevenly and it's got a little bit of slop it's not terrible but when I rebuild this sled, I'm going to go through and actually use either aluminum or HDPE runners. That way I don't have to worry about them expanding or contracting with uh, humidity and stuff. So, so hopefully that would be nice to do that. I also need to make a cross-cut sled for this big saw too, since it has such a large cross-cut capacity or... Uh, thickness capacity I should say but like I said earlier card scraper is one of the best ways to clean up glue squeeze out it saves sanding and we all know that glue squeeze out actually clogs up sandpaper faster so this helps kind of alleviate that saves a little bit of sandpaper because everything's expensive nowadays but this just takes a few minutes it's not really that long it's not that hard to do and card scrapers aren't that expensive so I love breaking them out and using them when I can but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top down to final size it's gonna be 18 by 18 and let's see we're gonna go through do a little bit more pocket holing on the front stretchers and you see I'm keeping everything labeled and taped together that way I keep track of what piece goes with what set. I have a set for A and B, one for each nightstand. And then later on I actually go through and mark the legs out on what face I want pointing which way. And then mark it A1, A2, A3, A4. Or B1, 2, 3, 4. And that just helps me keep track of how everything is going to go together so that way I don't put something together backwards or end up with a bad face of a leg with a knot or the pith just pointing straight forward. It's stuff like that that does help make a 
piece look a little bit more finished. And just trying to keep track of stuff like that really does help with how fast you can move along on a project. It might take a few minutes, but in the end, it's worth it, and it pays out extremely well. So... I've got my little trim router here. I'm doing all the roundovers on stuff. I'm using an eighth inch roundover bit. And I love the way that works and looks on hardwoods. It's not too big, but it's not kind of, it's not too little either. It just rounds it over enough and smooths it out, gets rid of the sharp edges. Something I should mention here too is I'm using a quarter inch dowel to inset the stretchers on the sides of the nightstand and that allows a perfect quarter inch inset without any guesswork not trying to you know kind of hold your tongue the right way and clamp it at the same time to a line using those dowels worked out really well I highly recommend doing that whether you need a quarter inch a half or a three eighths or whatever find a dowel on the right size and use that as a spacer that that really did work really well so I've got the door boxes all put together now and I'm gonna go through and make actually for the first time I'm gonna make my own drawer knobs I'm kind of ashamed to say that I haven't done this before especially since I love turning so much but I'm just trying to eyeball the right diameter and keep the size and shape flowing together the same way and these turned out damn near identical I mean if there's a 32nd or a 64th of an inch of difference in either one I'd be surprised but they turned out extremely well and it's going to be something that I definitely do a lot more in the future and I'm probably going to take a lot of my uh, scrap wood and go ahead and turn it into knobs so I have them for future reference or just to have on hand because we all have a ton of scrap wood that we don't know what to do with and we all need to use it up, so if I have a little box of those sitting in the corner, that's going to give me a head start for something else later on. But, you may have noticed I didn't show putting in the shelf or the drawer runners inside. Um, I was actually pouring concrete the same day that I filmed this. And waiting for the pump truck to show up and stuff, I was just in and out of the shop so much that... It was just really hard to film today until after the concrete was poured, so I did lose a little bit of footage, but it wasn't anything too drastic. But I'm going ahead and putting on a nice, bold linseed oil finish. It's a really simple finish. You just wipe it on, wipe off the excess. The wood will soak up whatever it wants, and it just makes the color pop, especially walnut. Walnut loves bold linseed oil, and it just, it makes the color explode on it. I just, it's great. Not to mention, it's a really low maintenance finish, and if there's ever a little scratch or a dent or a ding, it's real easy to fix and maintain. So now we have to go through and see all the beauty shots of these things. They turned out extremely well. I couldn't be happier with them. And at the time of filming this voiceover, the... People have already come and picked up these nightstands, and they were thrilled with them, and they couldn't be happier, which, as the maker, makes me extremely happy, because, you know, that kind of makes or breaks what I do, but these things turned out great, and if y'all think they did too, leave me a like, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.